Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and I'm here to tell you that you're wrong about bundles. Or maybe you're like me, and you think bundles are the best thing since sliced bread in a bag. But if you're not digging bundles quite yet, I think I understand why, and I hope this video will be helpful to reframe bundles in a way that makes them seem more useful. Here's the first step to understanding bundles. Bundles are not shulker boxes. I see the two getting compared a lot, and it's not surprising really, because shulker boxes have really been the only upgrade to Minecraft's inventory system recently. So when bundles add another way to manage your inventory, well, we didn't really have much to compare it to. It's that, the offhand, and putting chests on a llama. Seriously, those are the only real changes Minecraft has made to the inventory since double chests were invented. When bundles made their debut at Minecraft Live, we were looking at the first major changes to inventory in quite some time, and shulker boxes are a hard act to follow. The option to store a chest's worth of items in one slot of your inventory is incredibly powerful, which is one of the reasons you have to go to the end to get them. So it's no surprise people's reaction to the bundle was, wait, they only hold 64 items? And I have to kill rabbits to get them? Yes, bundles only hold 64 items. This might feel disappointing to you, especially if you've been using a creative world to test the snapshots, because our first instinct when playing in creative is to pull a full stack of items out of your inventory, instantly fill a bundle, and realize there's no more room left. Instead of using creative though, I heartily recommend creating a temporary snapshot survival world, because that's where bundles come into their own. They're really designed to tidy up the loose odds and ends in your inventory, to condense all those annoying stacks of two or three items you've got lying around into a single inventory space. They're like those vacuum sealed bags that you use to bring all your clothes on holiday with you and still leave room in the rest of the suitcase. And really, the strength of bundles is not about capacity, it's about variety. Here is a slightly contrived example, but let's say you're working on a build project that uses like 60 different blocks. You've got slabs and stairs in there, the works. You craft a full stack of everything, but it turns out the perfect amount you needed for each material was 63. Suddenly, you're left with one of each item. If you want to pack all this into a shulker box and bring it home with you, you actually need three shulker boxes, or two and some regular inventory space, because at the end of the day, shulker boxes can carry 27 stacks of items, which means 1,728 items if you've got a full stack of each one, but if you've only got one of each item, then it's only carrying 27 items. You bring in a second shulker box, and you're only up to 54. This is where the bundle steps in, allowing you to carry all 60 of those blocks you're bringing home with you in a single inventory space. That inventory space, by the way, could just as easily be in a shulker box, allowing you to, more realistically, bring home all the stacks of stone and wood you didn't use in your project alongside all the bits and pieces. But this brings me to my next point, Bundles are an addition to shulker boxes, not a substitute. Let's put it like this, if you bring a shulker box with you when you go caving, or you're working on a build or a redstone project somewhere, and you have any spaces in your shulker box taken up by single items that could be part of a stack, you are not using that shulker box efficiently. That is space that could hold 64 items, and you're only using it to hold one or two. But right now, in 116 or earlier, you have no alternative. Once the Caves and Cliffs update arrives, though, you can keep a bundle in that shulker box to tidy up those loose ends, and suddenly the space that was taken up by individual items can be shuffled together into a single inventory slot to make room for additional stacks of items. Bundles allow us to use inventory more efficiently. But let's go back to the question we asked earlier. Wait, they only hold 64 items? Actually, they only hold 16 items if you're putting in signs or eggs or ender pearls, and they can only hold one non-stackable item. The capacity of bundles is limited to what you can fit in a single inventory space, after all. It doesn't shrink the space down and make it smaller, it just tidies stuff away. I've seen arguments for making the capacity of bundles bigger. If they held two stacks, people suggest, they might actually be useful. 
And that's not necessarily the case. When people ask for an expansion to inventory capacity, I don't think you are removing the problem, you are simply delaying it. It takes longer for your inventory to fill up with items, but it still fills up with items and then you have the same problem. It's like how Twitter used to have a limit of 140 characters per tweet and then that doubled to 280 and I still don't feel like that gives me enough room to share my innermost thoughts and feelings about bundles with you. And bundles are like that too. If they held two stacks of items, sure, that'd feel useful compared to what they are right now, until you put a stack of iron ore and a stack of coal in there and you go, wait, I've run out of space again. I've seen people look at bundles and say they don't solve the problem with inventory. The problem with this argument is that people somehow assume there is one problem with inventory. I think there are many challenges to managing inventory in Minecraft and they aren't all going to be solved by one feature. Bundles are not a magic bullet. Bundles are an addition to inventory management, not a solution. Or rather, they solve one problem, not all of them. And they're not designed to solve all of them. And it would be foolish to assume that Mojang is just going to drop bundles on us and ride off into the sunset. There are probably more solutions on the way. It just takes time. Any problem as big as this has to be solved by breaking it down into individual chunks to make it easier to digest. And so, to solve the problem of not using the capacity of your inventory as efficiently as you could, you have bundles. I think we spend a lot of time talking about the inventory problem, and I think one of the biggest takeaways there was that this is not actually one problem. It's it's constructed from a lot of sub-problems. For example, uh, hotbar management is one part of uh, getting a lot of blocks for your huge build somewhere, that, that's like something the shulkers help with. But I think there is a third sub-problem where every time you leave your base to go exploring somewhere, your inventory keeps getting full of junk. Like, this lot just has two flowers. <laughs> this lot has just one seed, right? And I think the bundles are really going to help with that problem. I think my favourite way of looking at it right now is comparing it to the junk drawer in your house. The one with all the screws and half-dead batteries and weird plastic things you're saving just in case they turn out to be useful or important for something. Your inventory in Minecraft is that junk drawer. Bundles are not a new drawer for you to move stuff into, they are organisers and dividers for that junk drawer. So you can put all the screws in a helpful tin and the batteries in a Ziploc bag and the plastic thingamajigs in a separate tub and all of the bigger, bulkier stuff can stay where it is because at least it's not covered with loose nails and pencil stubs anymore. Let's also look at the other part of the question we asked earlier. Wait, I have to kill rabbits to get them? The crafting recipe for bundles requires six rabbit hide and two string. Rabbit hide currently has two uses in Minecraft, trading to leather workers and making leather. Both of these are kind of redundant in a default vanilla world since leather is freely available from cows much more quickly than you'll find rabbits in most cases and leather workers buy that as well. Most people don't bother farming rabbits unless they want large quantities of rabbits feet for jump boost potions and that's an effect you can get from a beacon anyway. So bundles pull the neat trick of making rabbit hide necessary, a desirable item. And in the early game, when you haven't established a base and basically anything you collect will be useful later, inventory management comes at a premium and a bundle will be really useful for tidying up things like mob drops and all the different types of food you acquire at the start of a fresh world. So how hard is it to find rabbits? I started a fresh random seed hardcore world, so you can see I'm not cheating any of this, and I timed how long it took me to get hold of a bundle. Finding a desert or a snow plains is really the key to it, since rabbits spawn there in abundance. They also spawn in tiger biomes and flower forests, but other passive mobs will spawn freely in those biomes, while you don't get a lot of cows and sheep spawning in the desert, so the passive mob cap there is freed up for rabbits to spawn across the entire biome. You'll usually find them spawning in groups of three, with an adult and two babies, so you'll want to go around killing the adults and then circle back around for the babies to grow up. The trick is also to get hold of dandelions, since they are rabbits' preferred food along with carrots. Holding a dandelion will stop them running away from you, and on Java you can switch the dandelion to your offhand to leave your sword hand free for swinging. Before the sun set on my first day in this world, I had enough rabbit hide to craft a bundle and I hadn't even got string yet, so I waited a little longer to skip the night and killed a spider, then lucked into an abandoned mineshaft when I did some more caving. 
In the end, it took me just under 17 minutes to craft my first bundle, and I was lucky the desert was quite close to my spawn point, but it's reasonable to assume you could get hold of a bundle within the first hour of a new Minecraft world. If you don't mind playing the long game, or you simply don't want to kill adorable rabbits, tame a bunch of village cats and let them roam around while you sleep at night. Cats have about an 11% chance to bring you both rabbit hide and string, so they could be a more peaceful way to farm bundle crafting supplies. Now let's take a look at how bundles handle, because that's changed a little bit since they were first introduced. With the bundle in your inventory, you can pick up items and right-click on the bundle to store them inside. Personally, I prefer to pick up the bundle and right-click on the items, which feels a little faster. Once the items are bundled up, right-clicking on the bundle will remove the last item you put in. Alternatively, picking up the bundle and right-clicking on an empty inventory slot will put the most recently bundled item there. In previous snapshots, bundles emptied their entire contents into your inventory with a right click, which didn't feel like the best solution, since it just recreated the mess it had been used to tidy up. But now, if you've buried an item you want towards the bottom of a bundle, it can take some time to click through the contents and get it out. The solution to that is to put the bundle on your hotbar, close your inventory, and right click with the bundle held in your hand. The contents of the bundle will be thrown onto the floor, and you can simply walk over them to pick them back up, bundle up everything you don't need, and keep hold of the stuff you do. You can also take advantage of this behaviour if you have a couple of hoppers handy. Setting up two hoppers to output into a chest allows you to throw the contents of a bundle across the middle of these hoppers, which will swiftly push the items into the storage chest. Even if you have a large variety of items stored in the bundle, the hoppers should easily collect them all before they're at risk of despawning. Then you can simply open up the chest to get what you need without having to sort the bundle's contents through your inventory first. Or the chest could be a storage buffer for a sorting system, and the items could be sorted back into chests using item filters. You could even balance a hopper minecart directly between the two hoppers, guaranteeing the items are split evenly between the two. The last thing I'll point out here is that a double chest has space for 54 unique items, and the hoppers each hold 5, making storage for 64 items the exact capacity of a bundle. It's pretty convenient. Anecdotally, after using bundles in the snapshots, you probably don't want more than two or three in your inventory at once. They start to become the clutter beyond that point, and it becomes difficult to remember at a glance which bundle is which. You can rename them using an anvil, and I found sorting them into food, loot, and mob drops usually covers the categories of early game items while leaving room in your inventory for the stuff you are getting stacks of, like wood, cobblestone, and hopefully iron. Later on, when you're approaching build projects, it can be helpful to keep a bundle in your inventory or a nearby chest for clearing up those loose slabs, fences, stairs, and trap doors you might use to add detail to a build, and you won't need for crafting recipes later. And once you're at the stage where you have shulker boxes, it might help to have a bundle in any of your utility shulker boxes to tidy up those odds and ends, and as I mentioned earlier, using the shulker's capacity more efficiently. Finally, before we wrap up the video, let's take a look at where I'm wrong about bundles, because they are far from a perfect feature, and while the developers might not be interested in adding more functionality to bundles, I think there's still room for improvement here. First of all, when we pick up a stack of items, it's possible to click and drag them to spread them between the available slots in our inventory. It'd be great if we could do this with bundles, depositing each unique item into a new inventory space. One reason I can see for not implementing this behaviour is that bundles mostly use the right-click button to manipulate their contents, and dragging a stack of items with right-click spreads out the stack one item at a time, so it might not be consistent for bundles to leave groups of items this way. It might also be difficult to implement that kind of behaviour on Bedrock Edition for players with a touchscreen or a console controller, but that's a whole can of worms in itself. The other thing that would really help bundles is colour coding. While yes, dyeing a bundle would mean adding 16 additional items to the game, the ability to colour code inventory management tools, as we already do with shulker boxes, makes them so much more convenient to use. Knowing at a glance which of the three bundles in my inventory is for saplings, and which one has all of the diamonds in it, would really reduce the fumbling around that's likely to leave players frustrated with bundles. The last thing to say, of course, is that bundles will not be for everyone, and that's fine. 
but I think they're worth giving a chance, and if you are on the fence, hopefully this video will help to reframe the way you think about bundles. That's going to be it from me, thank you so much for watching this video, my name has been Pixariffs, please don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye for now.